What is up? Oh, are we? We're not. Ladies. Oh, we're on. We're on. Sorry, folks. We <laughs> we uh. We were just doing a little <laughs> side conversation about the matchup, kind of. A, a little a little sideboarding, as they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got a fun one here today. I don't know how this keeps happening. I I happen to own both Ponza <laughs> and Green White Value Town. Um, this is like a Todd Stevens style company deck. Uh, I call it Green White Lands. I think that's the most appropriate name. You don't actually play that many lands. It's not like a lands deck in Legacy. But all of your creatures, is especially a, a handful of three drops, mm -hmm. do nothing but synergize with lands. And that would be Knight of the Reliquary, Tireless Tracker, Corsair of Cruffix, uh, Azusa Lost But Seeking, and Ramen Up Excavator. That's a lot of land. That's a lot of land. That's a lot of land, lot of land guys. Um, and I was actually playing a deck with, uh, with four step links for a little bit, which is very fun. You can actually kill people on turn three with this deck with step links. Um, if it, seems, you it seems a little counterproductive to what the deck is trying to do. It really seems like it's trying to kind of sit back a little bit, really grind you down, Yeah, but so one, down to a pulp. One of the things the deck has a problem with is, is having a clock when it needs to, mm -hmm. and step links can be a pretty sweet clock. Um, seems reasonable. But yeah, in, in some ways it is, it is uh, not the... <laughs> I'm not saying it's the best way to play the deck, but it's a way to play the deck. Because one, one of the great downsides of step links is it's a bad top deck because you don't have enough lands to keep it going. Correct. But green-white lands always has lands to keep it going. That's sort of the point of the deck. Um, you, you've always got guys on top, you know, mm -hmm. looking at your, your coarser cards. You've got uh, knights getting more and more land triggers. One thing um, I feel is noteworthy uh, for this matchup specifically, as a green-white value deck, he's got a lot of basics. So he's going to be much less susceptible to the card Blood Moon. Sure. Which has got to feel pretty good. But unfortunately, it looks like he might be having to take a mold of five. I don't know if he's Ooh, on the player of the good. draw, but he's on the he's on the pl draw. But did Luke keep? Scry to the bottom. How many did Luke keep? Zero though? lander, and Luke has kept six. Okay. So, if Mike spikes double land in a row, I think we can have a game. But as things stand, he's kept a zero lander bird, Scry to the bottom. Yeah, this uh, this could be game right here. Yeah. So um, then again, then again, sometimes these Ponza decks derp around a lot. They have to actually find a threat. Um, you know, Blood Moon plus Acid Moss doesn't just win you the game. The the Stone Rain on a Zero <laughs> Lander. <is kind> of <laughs> yeah, that's probably sure. Pretty a pretty <coughs> potent one two punch. And let's see, does he get there? He does not. Path. Back. So that's not great. Um, I think he's got exactly one more turn to hit, and then that you're is probably just over. Just better off conceding and not giving up. Well, especially about when your the deck. Blood Moon the Blood Moon comes down here. Um, you know. It, Mike has a lot of basics, you know, but he doesn't have any. So, he doesn't actually have enough that he's going to have more than fetch lands. He mm -hmm. probably won't be able to have access to any mana here if we see this blood moon. And this does bring up an interesting question: unless if he draws exactly forest right now, yeah, would you just like pass it back a couple times, just see what your opponent's on until you have to discard a hand size? Sure. Now, of course, um, in in Mike's case, you you already know what Luke's on now. Mm -hmm. um, so I would maybe. I would maybe wait to make him play a threat so I can try to get a, a gauge on what his threats are, though you probably already know what they are. I mean, it's certainly Inferno Titan. As we see, Luke has Thrag Tusk and Dark Dwellers in hand right now. And he pitches Mind Sensor. See, I'm, yeah, I'm a pitching, little surprised here. I pitching think a card, yeah, that's... I, I just wanted to Yeah, concede. I think the best, the best strategic competitive REL way to play this would be to just, yeah, not, not go to discard there. Scoop him up. But uh, Luke may already know what Mike is playing, so... Basic Please planes. planes. <laughs> Not what you... <laughs> <laughs> What's that you say? You hate to see it, yeah, folks. <laughs> you really hate to see that, folks. He had the opportunity oh, the to company. cast the Swag Tusk, but he decided, you know what, I just wanted... I just want to stone rain this, <laughs> this plane. I want the perfect victory. I like how uh, Luke is playing white-boarded stone rains and white-boarded birds, but not a white-boarded blood moon, you know? If you're going to make him have it, make him have it. Tapping five, about to jam. Ooh, Stormbreath Dragon. That'll... That'll end things relatively quickly. Plus the monstrous being able to deal up yeah. seven damage. Yeah, so Michael scoop him up. Uh, seen enough. See so and now. Oh, go ahead. If if Luke didn't know <sighs> what Mike was on, I really think not conceding there was uh, not very beneficial because now Luke knows how to sideboard. He knows. Yeah. Roughly what the matchup yeah. is. It's a voice now, deck. Now in Mike in Mike's defense, now that he's seen Storm Breath, which again anyone paying close attention to the meta could have guessed, but. Now that you've seen Storm Breath, uh, you know that you can bring in your Blessed Alliance mm -hmm. or you know whatever white card you have to try to deal with that. Um, I mean, Storm Breath does seem 
pretty damn annoying for this green white value deck. Yeah, um, I guess his mic does, does have. Answers that are I think he probably has one or two Blessed Alliance. Oh, that's um, likely it. But also, Knight of the Reliquary can just out race Storm Breath. Mm -hmm. um, if both players are at 20 life and your opponent plays a Storm Breath, they swing for four, and then you have an 8 8 Knight or something, you know, you win the race most of the time, um, even if they're able to Monstrous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Storm Breath's pretty, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty good here. Um, anyway, there's some key cards in this matchup. Um, for Mike, those cards are, um, for one, basic basic uh, forest and basic plains. Yep, those seem, those seem nice. Yep, and he also wants to be able to have, he wants to be able to stick some sort of threat that uh, uh, doesn't die to cards like Inferno Titan. Mm -hmm. um, Which he's like got to assume. Yeah, he's got. He's got. Yeah. If he has any idea what this Ponza deck is really trying yeah. to accomplish, I know Mike has that. a five drop Sigarda. Um, the trouble with that card is it's hard to cast through Blood Moon, but it's also just a great flyer. It it it's really just a solid. I mean, both decks have to go bigger than one another. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, th actually, that brings me to an interesting question. Uh, I was looking at Luke's sideboard. Nothing really seemed to stick out too much Probably for this. Ang like he had like <laughs> got anger. some. He had a couple angers, which ancient. I think are obviously good. Yeah. Uh, he had like an ancient grudge or two. He had some finks, which I could see an argument for. And he had a bunch of graveyard hate in the form of like relics and stuff, which I don't think are really going to be doing all that much no, here. No, they're not. Do you keep the blood moon in this matchup? Is finks better than a blood moon <sighs> um, in this matchup? I think you. I think you don't need the blood moons here on the draw. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would agree with that. They might be okay on the. The thing is, Blood Moon is just bad against Mana Dork decks, and yep. Luke might not have quite placed Mike's deck. But if he knows he's on Green White Value Tile, you know he's got at least four, but probably six or seven Mana Dorks. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Blood Moon is not great here. I would certainly love if my opponent played it because that's just a card out of their hand, and I can try to slog through the mid range. Mm -hmm. You know, match better. Um, but yeah, big cards for Mike are basic land. Uh, any big resilient threats he has, like Whisperwood Elemental or Sigarda, and then also his mana dorks, uh, Hierarch and Birds, just make Stone Rain look look really bad. By the way, gonna cut you off here. Shout out to Zhao Pyres, 55. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. What a dude. Yeah. Dude um, being a non-gender specific term. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Everybody's a dude in my eyes. Um, also, so big cards for Luke. Um, Bonfire of the Damned. Um, he probably has in some number main board. Uh, some players play as many as four bonfires main board, but he could have like two the in the main, man. two in the side. <laughs> Say what? The madman. I definitely didn't see any bonfires in the side. So oh, pe people must totally play bad. three or four in the main board. Um, well, they can still be mad. Yeah. <laughs> mad men, women. Just it, t it takes a pretty sick person to show up with Ponza to, to Friday Night Magic anyway. Now, looks like pretty pretty boring start. Does Luke have... Six lands and a bird. <laughs> Does Luke have six lands and a bird? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, it's a, so he's, got a, he's got a frag desk. Ooh, and a little oh, stone ring. I thought that stone ring was bang. a basic mountain. <laughs> that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable <laughs> mistake to make. Really tiny text box. Destroy your yeah. target land. That's it. You know. Well, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope he didn't uh, name. I hope he didn't target uh, Wooded Foothills. Okay, great. We targeted. And the, I do think Mike has kept a relatively land light hand. I saw a lot of three drops. So maybe he just kept a, a three-lander mono three-drop hand, and that would be rough. And I'm kind of surprised. I mean, do you really think this is a matchup where you need to get on the board quickly if you're the green-white value deck? Because, I mean, his hand not, not really. basically is just mono three-drops. The only reason you would want to need to get on the board quickly is if your opponent has, like, a Chandra or Garuk or something. Mm -hmm. but I mean, this, it, from this point of view, deck can produce some pretty sick starts. I mean, having as much upwards oh of Oh, yeah, well mana. yeah, if you go, yeah, if you go, your turn two play, you can actually play, you know, if you go turn one, Elf, turn two, Utopia Sprawl, you can have four mana remaining to drop a Thrun, a Chandra, a Garuk, um, a, a Garuk an Acid Moss. Sick. Yeah, the Garuk is dope as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Untap your lanes again, then yep. you get three more mana. Yeah, you can play, you can actually play a Garuk and, like, a Chandra and, or something on Garuk on and, uh, Blood Moon, perhaps? Uh, stone Rain? <laughs> uh, yeah, Garuk, Garuk plus Stone Rain on turn two seems pretty good. That seems like it's going to be relatively hard to come back from. But luckily for Mike, he doesn't have to worry about that. Just plays the land pass of the turn. I do see Gavin in hand. Two companies. Uh, unfortunately, though, he's got a Courser, which he does not have the double green for that, thanks to that little Stone Rain. But he does have a Knight, which he will be able to play, be a 4-4. Four, four. 
which is good. Have something to do. Hopefully, just Luke doesn't play too many bomby threats. Hopefully, he stumbles a little bit because when you're playing against Ponza and it starts to get to the mid late game, it really is just dependent on what they draw. Being yeah, the deck, the, deck has, the deck has no filter. Um, it has a bunch of shitty cards. You know, it like, <laughs> like a bunch of shitty top decks, right? Yeah. I mean, like Utopia Sprawl and the Elves and all that. They've the deck is full of junk. They've got about ten real cards in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it just facilitates those cards. Um, so they have to actually find something to kill you with. And I believe this is really Luke's only notable threat. He's got a, a swag tusk, which eats a path, which will oh. be moved to the exile, ideally hope momentarily. Path and just pathing a swag tusk seems really bad. Yeah, it's not a great exchange because then he just gets a 3-3 three, three right back. And he gets a land. That he seems so bad. Giving him, He plays 5 mana and he gets a 3-3 three, three and a land. <laughs> uh. That's... So I, I played that card. Maybe. I probably wouldn't play that card, but Oh no, I'd I definitely play the Thrag Tusk. I just never path the Thrag Tusk. I did Well you really would you would you play a card that was five mana, make a three three get a land out of your deck? Oh. I see what you're saying. So like it's a far seek stapled to a, a three yeah? No, I wouldn't play that. I don't think I'd play <laughs> it's that all either. it's it'd be sick and limited though. <laughs> that would be really good and limited. That would probably that I could see now nah, that probably so, isn't even good. So com well compare that card to Urban Evolution. Which is a five mana sorcery that says draw three cards, play an additional land this turn. All right. I think I like Urban Evolution more than that. I think I do, but that also has blue in the mana cost, right? This is true. This is true. But you know, enough theory crafting about non-existent cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm passing with four mana up. Oh <laughs> man, I wonder what sucks. the company deck is gonna. God, nothing to play. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunate. Do you remember back in the day when? Uh, uh, twin players used to. I, there was this one guy down in Northern Kentucky who, I think he thought I was not a magic. Like he thought I was a new player or something. Um, but he was playing blue red twin, and he goes like, turn one, play nothing. He doesn't have hand disruption or, or hand sculpt. Mm -hmm. Turn two, he played nothing. Turn three, he goes to his main phase. He draws. He's like, man. And he's like trying to sell it to me. Yeah, and he's like, got like, man, sucks. why? Where are all my good cards? <laughs> I I can't. Don't have any plays. And then. I pass turn and he exarchs me <laughs> and then mm -hmm. goes for Splinter Twin. I'm like, all right, dude, I'm going to path it. <laughs> but he was like, he was saying like, oh, man, he was really trying to sell it to me that he had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely done that. A lot of times when I've actually, back in the day, playing Twin, which, by the way, what card was just cast? Is that a... Uh, is which that one? A beast Within? Is that a yeah, Beast that's, Within? Yeah, that's, that's an OG Beast Within, yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Yep. Anyway, but uh, back in the day... Back in the twin days, I would occasionally, on upkeep, even if I didn't have a, any Pester Might or Deceiver Extract shenanigans, I'd stop them in their upkeep with three mana, <laughs> sit, ponder things, be like, mm, yeah. no, you can go to your draw uh, stuff. On your upkeep. <laughs> on, your, on your upkeep. Let me just, let me just on your upkeep. for a second. <laughs> now nah, you're good. So, a pretty, pretty good company here. Grabs a Ramanop Excavator and a Knight of the Reliquary. Oh, wow, we had a, a company. Bit, that's uh, that's something. Who knew? A little bit of a tension between the Excavator and the... Night. That's not too bad with Yeah, fetch not lands really with fetch lands. Uh, but it's fine. But I believe he does have at least one Wooded Foothills in there, so he will get some pretty sick value off of that. <coughs> Ramanak Excavator, of course, being a Crucible of Worlds, stable to a 2-3, three, three, rather, which uh, yeah, pretty good. So pretty I wonder good. if it's worth it, uh, depending on what you got in hand. You could begin Ghost Quartering your opponents. Yeah. There we go. And we'll see like him do it. That's what he's starting to do. Yeah. Ghost Quarter of Utopia Ghost Quarter. I mean, especially with another... With another... One of the old companies in hand. He's just probably going to sit back, maybe beat in for what is that? I believe the it's a five right now. Is uh, that I think what the that's a, is? yeah. It looks like we got Ghost Quarter and Wooded. So actually, no. Uh, I think he's got a a uh, green white shock from Temple oh a temple. Yeah, that's right. That stone the stone right now. So he's a five five. So I presume he will attack both guys. And then post combat, play some type of land. Not really sure which one he's going to play. <sighs> what are you thinking here? Just the uh, just the wooded, or do you think he'll grab that ghost quarter again? Uh, I I don't know what's in his hand. So. Oh, I mean, I guess he passes, so he must have played land this turn. Yeah, he played that second ghost quarter this turn. Oh, okay, I don't think he played <laughs> the same one because I see another one in his yard. He must have had another one in his hand. Wait, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what you put, say? He, that ghost quarter on the top of his yard, that's the one he played for turn. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, because he used it on the sprawl. So stone rain. 
Company in response. In response. Reasonable. Seems Makes sense. good. Seems good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take a peek. Oh, not letting us look. <laughs> wow, not very courteous. Looks like we got a Thalia. I'm seeing he's holding two cards, so it's not a voice whiff. and mind sensor. So um, mind since sensor? he he let company resolve already, so Luke cannot fetch this fetch without having it taxed by mind sensor. Mm -hmm. um, and mind sensor is in play. Can't respond. Yep. to That stuff. Yep. None of that. And as we referenced <coughs> earlier, Luke has two lands in hand. With the lack of filtering, probably. Sure. Unless if he draws something big. But something well, big I will. Good I will soon. say. I will say. Luke may appear to be heavily behind her, and he is. But uh, top deck bonfire goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Luke actually may have four of those in his main board. Um, so we'll see what happens. Now, the smart thing to do, even if Luke does top deck bonfire, Mike can save his knight by ghost quartering himself. Uh, so we'll see if he sees that line, if that becomes relevant. But yeah, let's see if Luke uh, wants to search the top four, and he does. Oh no no oh, whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa oh top whoa, four whoa. top four bud top four bud top four. <laughs> All uh, right. Well, so you know. that's actually not allowed to happen. That's not actually a missed trigger. That's uh that's one or both players failing to maintain the game because mind sensor is not a trigger. Uh, well, looks like. But uh, you know what? Some <laughs> some days draws. there's pie. So anger's actually really good here. Kills yeah. everything but the knight. Which um, is unfortunate. He's already drawn the card. I'm not really sure what we're gonna have going on here. Yeah. So some someone should point out. To, well, I think someone needs to point out to Mike that at least remind him he has a mind sensor. But it's it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's already resolved. It appears that they have learned. They've realized. Yeah. They, I mean, they can't really go back at this point. Um. So we'll 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 sit back, ponder, see what's. <laughs> going to go on here. I'm not really sure what exactly the judge call is going to be here. Yeah, but he, um, you can't take his draw step back, though. You have to give him the... An he has an anger in hand now. Um, I would assume. It's been a while since a situation like this has come up for me. I don't play against mind sensors all too often. I, I often force people to play against my mind sensor, mm -hmm. and um, it's always pretty fun. I sort of just... So I almost always just... The, the, most, the best thing to do is it's to get in a really good habit of doing this, putting your hand out like right in front of their, their face, because otherwise they just won't... See, what you my preferred method is punching their deck. That's I, 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 I the tried floor. that, yeah, and I, and I, uh, and I got ejected from the, uh, the tournament. No, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> no, yeah, the best thing to do if you're playing a mind sensor is... Um, Judge getting on in To here. just put your hand out flat in the middle of the playing area, look, in the, look at them in the eye and say, S S mind sensor. You fool! Like, mind sensor. <laughs> if they go to pick up the deck, just... Because there's almost no way to, pe people don't, you know, audibly they won't stop looking through their <laughs> deck. They, ju they just, you have to put your hand out and show I them all five fingers. I, I also typically carry with me a pocket full of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Get hit them with a pocket <laughs> sand <laughs> when they start to search. You ever watch the show The West Wing? <laughs> I've not, but I know. Okay, there's, there's a character on The West Wing. I think his, his name is Toby. He's an advisor to the president, the fake president in the show. Anyway, he, uh, he used to carry around a... Uh, a roll of quarters to punch people. <laughs> Just in, if need yeah. be, he would carry around a roll of quarters. Because uh, I guess if you punch somebody with a roll of quarters in your yeah, hand, yeah, it keeps your knuckles. It like keeps keeps your knuckles, but it also makes the punch a lot harder. <laughs> you, you've sense. got this additional weight in your palm. Well, we've resolved the issue. It looks like the anger was not drawn. It appears, contrary to your so expert that assessment. Who who judged that, Scott? I believe it was Scott. I saw so a lot of rings. That. <laughs> Which seems like a Scott that thing to do. That cannot be a correct ruling. Um, but didn't matter. Uh, he got ended up getting the force. Anyway. How did they? How did they have Luke draw? There was no way to recreate the order of the deck. How did they have Luke draw? He, um, the it thing looked is like they just had him shuffle up. But the thing is, you shuffle after a mind sensor. You shuffle the library anyway. After a mind sensor, you shuffle the library. Well, you anyway. know what? There was no head judge to appeal to. That so that was for our boy. Luke. I'm n I am not a judge. I want to point that out. But that was almost certainly an incorrect ruling by resident judge Scott. Which Scott makes a lot of very good rulings. So he's I know he's got a lot on his plate and he's very busy today on Black Friday. It might have been a situation but where they uh, both where the card had never actually come in contact with his hand. Maybe so they decided to put it back. I I'm not really sure. Um. Uh, but ultimately didn't really matter. Just drew a land for turn and died. Kind of feels bad for him, though, because that anger would have definitely done 
some amount of stabilization. He still would have had that big knight staring him down. Yeah, he would have had the knight to fight off. But but so hear hear me out here. So what what just happened there is we saw mm -hmm. the mind sensor not be in effect, and Luke got a forest, meaning that the only difference between his draw that he took and the real draw he should have taken is that there was a forest in the deck versus a forest not being in the deck. And so what Scott Correct. did was rewind the game, putting the forest back in the deck and forcing him to take the draw with the forest in play. Now what's stupid about that is we have no idea well, they also put what was on the top. That's what but we have no idea what was on the top four. Any card could have been... If, we, if he had a forest, a mountain, or a stomping ground in the top four, that card would have gone into play and the draw would have been identical statistically mm -hmm. and the anger could have been drawn with the same statistics, right? Mm -hmm. um, just with one card out of the library. We have no idea what was on the top four. So to, re t to rewind the game to that state is almost certainly an improper judge ruling. But, but let, let us know in chat what you think about that. But I'm uh, fairly confident that um, th that's not the proper way to handle that in most situations. Well, regardless of whether or not that card had touched Luke's hand. Moving on from that. You know, <laughs> spilled milk, yada, yada, yada. One thing I will note that I, I find to be a bit sus, a bit suspect, as we say in the biz, is uh, Luke did, in fact, have a Blood Moon. I did see that when he was looking at the top four. He had Blood Moons on the draw, so All he's definitely going to have him in the play. I de well, he's, I saw one. I didn't. Okay. It was not like three Blood Moons, Forest. Um, but... I I gotta say I'm a little I'm a little skeptical on the blood moons. I think they would have been fine that game, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ghost Quarter is also kind of awkward against Blood Moon because it's almost like an instant speed way to respond. I mean, I've Ghost Quartered myself in response to many a blood moons. You know, that's a that's a very legitimate. Yeah, you always, if you line. take your basic out of your deck. Um, so I, I think that the blood moon seems fine against cards like Corsair that require double forest to cast. Um, and and even cards like Voice are heavily color intensive. You know, mm -hmm. a, a basic mountain will never help you cast those. Correct. But that would all be fine if the deck didn't play seven mana dorks. You know, I mean, it's almost with one. Even if you don't have a basic plant, if you just have a basic forest, Mike can cast most of the cards in his deck. So I don't know. I'm still not a fan of the Blood Moon being left in. I I think I think you can certainly make an argument for it. But on the play here, it seems fine. Mm -hmm. But on the draw, no way. So both of them lead off with a land and a pass. Neither of them have anything going on. Luke doesn't even have anything going on in the f second turn of the game, which is unfortunate. <coughs> dropping cards on his lap. Everybody's dropping cards <laughs> on their lap. <laughs> They're slippery. This this evening. They, they all dropped their brand new buttery dragon fingers shields. after Thanksgiving. Am I right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Somebody <laughs> said that earlier, and it wasn't funny then either. <laughs> Is that where I got that from? Yeah, you took that from. Okay. That that was is, is that, that entered your subconscious from someone else who was not nearly as funny as you, okay. and you've taken the bait. Well, that's unfortunate. I pre I, c I appreciate that compliment though. Let's see another pass. Slow game, in typical f m green mid range deck fashion. Yeah, not this is this is going to come down to who can mid range better. We and, got blood uh, being being cast. Yeah, so let me presumably say. Presumably, Mike is fetching response. Yeah, um, Blood Moon. I do not think is a uh, a good mid range card in this matchup at this stage in game three, mm -hmm. but uh, if it does successfully hinder Mike's game plan, I suppose it's fine. But if he gets basic forest here and then like draws Mandork next turn, it's gonna be pretty unimpactful. So he does opt for the forest rather than the. Well, victory. He did not cast opt. You get you can't make that mistake now that that card's legal. Um, no, he cannot. Draw step. Let's see what he's got. I think uh, May picked up he's not, showing, well. he's not showing us. He's got, oh, another, he's got forest, another basic forest. But yeah. unfortunately, I don't think he has the white mana. I definitely saw some number of Knight of the Royal Quarries in his hand. So that's tough, yeah. So he may be getting punished. Not punished, really, but... Well, so are you saying he, he fetched for the... He just drew that forest, right? He just did draw a forest, yes. So Excavator <laughs> is uh, yeah, not great. Not doing too much here. Though, if your opponent... Uh, I guess that's good. That that is good against the stone rains here, but looks like we don't have any stone rains. We do have a primal command in hand, but Luke can't actually even cast his own primal command because he needs. Uh, I believe he has another forest in hand. Oh, oh, he does. Yep. Ooh, he's letting us get a sneak peek. What a guy. 
Forest. F forest. Forest. Tap in four. See what he's got. Oh, that's an acid moss. Acid moss. So you acid moss the Not forest here. It definitely the, the excavator makes yeah, that. It doesn't matter as much with the excavator. Yeah. And see, I guess. Do you think Mike at all is getting punished here for playing the ghost quarter in his hand versus the forest at all? I mean, if he draws, if a, he draws double a green spell. Yeah, if he draws courser, that that's true. That's got to feel pretty bad, which I think is a small misstep, but definitely noteworthy. Sure. And I think he's got to play this forest out of his graveyard. I think if he plays land out of his hand, that'd be a little hasty, I guess. Because so he the, uh, could also just get, get this thing yeah, in, sure, in sure. Any various ways. So he does opt to grab it out of his graveyard. I think that's probably the right call. So the Looking key, over his options. The key mode on Primal Command from Luke here is search for a creature. Um, that's going to be the one yeah, that actually makes right. Luke's Blood Moon and a bunch of lands look better because he'll actually be able to invariably produce a threat. Because um, Mike could very easily draw his way out of this, but he can't draw his way out of it if he has an Inferno Titan beating him down. So it looks like he's casting the Primal Command. So I bet if we put the Spider the Monkey could pull this up. Yeah, cool. I, I, I think we're gonna <laughs> we're, I think we're gonna put this forest on top of Mike's library and then search for. Actually, can, can you only search for a green creature with Primal Command? You might well, only be able to get hopefully like a Frag Tusk or a Thrun Delastral or something. <laughs> it might <laughs> only be a green creature. Out. Oh, no, just any creature card. So I think we're going to get Inferno Titan and put the forest on top of the library. Oh, we made him shuffle his graveyard in. Interesting. I think I, 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 think I like putting the forest on top better. But uh, Yeah, I mean, you do really you, have Luke. much in the way of good, worthwhile lands to grab out of his yard. No. Um, you know what I think I would have done? I think I would have had my opponent gain seven life and me shuffle my graveyard in. Well, that seems like a very reasonable yeah. way. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, guys. I wouldn't. Oh, that's, that's funny. Silly. That was very funny, Victor. <laughs> what did he draw? He grabbed a storm breath out of his deck. No, what did, what did Mike draw there? Uh Mike's going to need some help here. This Blood Moon is certainly doing some work here, which, you know, has got me rethinking the validity of bringing Blood Moon or keeping Blood Moon in this matchup. Ooh, the, the, the second Excavator. You know, those Excavators got some diminishing returns. I'll say that. Yeah, that's definitely true. You can still only play one land per turn, which yep. is unfortunate. <laughs> he needs an Azusa, but that, that wouldn't really help him either here. Ooh. Goes for the, goes for the Arbor Elf. <laughs> just, just why not? See, see if your opponent uh, tries to counter it with their jam, jam, and now this uh, yeah, it's gonna close the, the monstrosity. I believe, unfortunately, this man is stacking his lands like a savage. So I don't know how many he has yeah. to play exactly. But you can Pretty probably sure activate six. the monstrous though, I and the monstrous will not six. only that'll probably deal six or seven damage to Mike, but it also make the uh, the storm breath into what like a seven seven. We'll make into seven seven, which I believe will. Basically end the game on the spot. I don't think it'll actually do that, but it might. And Mike's still without white mana. I believe he's got a courser in his hand, so I think he might just play this forest and jam a courser. But first, get in the chump. Oh, we're jumping. I I guess preserve your life total. I mean, yeah, I think I'm not sure why he jumped there, but whatever. It seems fine. I think he's so far ahead that he basically could. So he's not necessarily. So step. here's the thing: he's not necessarily far ahead now that we have this courser in play. Um, and I wonder, for one, wondering what he can Eldritch Evolution for because he yeah, that's, have what, the that's what I'm thinking. So if you even get like a Rex Age or something, that opens up your whole hand if you take out this Blood Moon. You do have to compete with this seven-seven uh, Storm Breath, but actually, the Storm Breath might just be lethal here if if he activate. If he activates he has uh, five cards in hand, yeah, one, one two, two, three, three, four, five. Okay, so we'll go to nine, and so he'll, so Luke can put him to two. So by hopefully activating he has monsters. maybe some type of like fiend hunter. Nope, can't have a fiend hunter. Pro white. Uh, hopefully he yeah. has a. <laughs> uh, There's not a whole <laughs> lot of things that do it. You really have to have blessed alliance if you're Mike here. Um, Which is not on the top of his deck. And he doesn't have white mana, but. So I guess he just has to hope he has one in his hand. But I'm definitely seeing three knights. <coughs> goes to nine, goes to two. And I believe he's just dead, unless if he does have that Blessed Alliance slinking around in there. Uh, company. company on top. Not really going to do much. It's looking through his hand. Maybe just 
Eldritch Evolution just cause, why not, you know? Are there any green creatures that exist? That, that can, can deal with a storm breath? Um, something with reach, yeah, a mono green creature with reach would deal with it very easily. But well, unfortunately, it looks like <coughs> our mana scooped. Ponza the Menace Ponza. takes it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, Blood Moon, as we said, is, seems fine on the play. I don't know why he left it on the draw. I, I guess it's impactful enough, but Mike, you know, Mike has eight fetch lands. I mean, um, and I think for a lot of players, especially, I don't feel like I've seen Luke play this deck a lot. I think it can be easy to get in that mindset of, like, this is a Blood Moon deck, so yeah. I have to keep in my mind. Yeah, and, and not every player, you know, discerns between the play and the draw for some cards like that. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, it's 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 great on the play in the matchup. Yeah, I mean, a turn two Blood Moon against... Yeah, of course. Most decks is Mike, pretty good. Mike got Mike got really pretty unlucky there. He, his opening land start was, you know, tap Temple Garden into fetch land, and he held the fetch land to respond to Blood Moon. He got a forest, which I and think then the next turn he drew forest. Yeah, which um, is if, unfortunate. If he'd have gotten planes and drew the forest, he'd have probably won that game. I almost think he would have. Yeah, I mean, being um, able to go night, three, night, night. Three, yeah, three knights is is not something Ponza can really beat, especially when your only removal is Bonfire and Beast Within. Um. So, kind of an unfortunate sequence of events for yeah. our boy there. But, yeah. you know, I mean, that's that's why people don't like Blood Moon, because it leads to these games where you feel like I just couldn't really do anything. You know, that yeah. probably, I imagine if Mike's sitting there, he's, he's his feelings are kind of hurt. You know, my feelings would yep. be hurt. Yep. I'd be feeling like a bit of a salty boy. <laughs> I'd go hang out with the deers in the backyard and lick the pillar of salt. Because I just <laughs> wow, that was that was really graphic and and sort of specific, Victor. <laughs> or maybe he is the pillar of salt. Maybe he's just gonna go stand outside to have his to wow. chuck on his jewel, Did and you? then people are just gonna. Oh, I got I got a thought here. Okay. I got a thought here. Did you know that Blood Moon is an anagram for Noob Mood L? Is that right? Wait, hold on. Let's. See. <laughs> I think that's right. Noob Mood L. Okay, forget about the L. The L is not important. I know what you're thinking, but noob mood. It blood moon puts you in a noob mood, you know, a boon mood almost. Maybe a noob mood. 